For this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite Google applications, and that's Google Forms. And with Google Forms, we are going to create a markable quiz. So it's actually a huge time saver for all teachers because Google Forms actually marks it and provides a score for you, you're the teacher, and the students. So we can actually do a quick little check-in to see what the students have learned up to now, uh, or we can do final assessments this way, uh, whatever it is that you need. Uh, it does just mark on its own and then provides you with a spreadsheet afterwards. So let's take a look at all those pieces now. So I'm just going to head over my waffle and open Google Forms. And we can see that we have an option for a blank quiz. And that actually has Google Forms set up all the quick settings that you need uh, to kind of make it different than just a standard Google Form survey. So we're going to open one of those right now. And let's give it uh, just a quick name here. So we'll do a call it quiz sample. And let's go right into the first question. And you're going to notice that in this first question it has everything that's pretty normal, like when it comes to creating a survey. Uh, but at the bottom, we have an answer key. We're going to talk about in a minute how that how that has to be changed in order for it to mark on its own. Now for every Google form, especially for quizzes or anything that I'm uh, actually collecting data, uh, I always ask for student names. Now, Google Forms does collect that information through uh, your, your SIS system, uh, but it's only the uh, email itself. So it kind of gets hard to differentiate which student is what. So I always ask for the student name. Just a quick little tip there. And I'm going to make that a required question. I'm not going to worry about that answer key or the points just yet because it's just the student name. So let's go right into making a question. Very first question, we're going to keep this super duper simple. So the first question we're going to have is what is the capital city of Canada. And we're going to keep that a multiple choice question, and we're going to start providing some possible answers. So we're going to say Toronto. We'll say Ottawa, Montreal, and then we're going to say Vancouver. Now, we know that the an correct answer is Ottawa, but we want Google Forms to mark this and check the answers for us. So we're going to hop into our answer key. We're going to provide a point score for this question. So we'll just make it a one pointer. And then we're going to select the correct answer. So that means if students pick Ottawa, they will receive one point. If they pick one of the other three, they're not going to collect anything. No points there. Click on done. We're going to make this a required question. And we are set to continue. So let's click the next one. So for this next question, uh, we'll do like a quick little math based one. We'll keep this one a little bit simple as well. So what is the total of 2.1 plus 3.2? And instead of a multiple choice question, we're going to make this a short answer question. Go back into my answer key. And now we can actually put in the correct answer. So actually type in the correct answer. So in this case, it is 5.3. Do some quick math in my head there. Now, some students might understand that there are more decimal points after the three. So you might get the odd student that might even say 5.30 instead of just 5.3. We don't know. Uh, depends on what type of question that you have. But this is a quick example of that you can have more than one correct answer in a Google Forms question. And you can see we can still continue adding more. We're not going to do that, though. Uh, we'll also say that we're going to mark all other answers as incorrect. Change this point total to one again. Click done. And then, of course, we do want to keep it a required question. We definitely want students to try every single question here. And let's just add one more question right at the end. And this time, we'll make it like a long answer question, um, something like more of like an opinion. And then we're marking their actual writing as opposed to the correct answer. So for here, we're going to do something simple again. What is your favorite food and why? Give as much detail as possible. So Google Forms changed that to a paragraph question, which is great. We'll change this into another required question. Now let's hop into that answer key. So for this question, we don't have a right answer because this is an opinion question but we can still provide a point total. When the students uh, answer this question, uh, it will automatically give them a, uh, a mark of zero, and that's up to us to go in 
read their answer, and then change this point total. And you're going to see that in a second. So we're going to click on done. All right, so we're going to see at the top of this page that there is a total point uh, possibility of seven points. And what I always do every time I create forms is always test it out myself too. So we're actually going to go ahead and uh, complete this quiz on our own, go into preview mode, and start answering these questions. So student name, Frank. What is the capital city of Canada for one point? It's Ottawa. What is a total of 2.1 plus 3.2? We're going to go ahead and provide a wrong answer there. What is your favorite food and why? Give as much detail as possible. In this case, we'll just say pizza is my favorite because cheese. We'll give a very bland answer there. And then we're going to have the students submit their answers. Let's them know that it's been recorded. We can actually have them even view the score. And then they can check to see what their point total was. So in this case, they got one out of seven. We got the first question right, second question wrong, and it provides the right answers for the students. Now we do have to explain that as teachers, we do have to go into this question. So right now it's a point total of zero, but once we go in, and I'm gonna show you in a second how to do that, we could actually change this question. We can actually change the mark here. So I'm gonna go back to my editing quiz, back to my editing form, and I'm gonna hop into responses. This is where like any other Google form, we can see a summary, we can see the questions and what the majority of students chose, the average scores, the median scores, okay? So let's go into the individual questions. So in this case, we can even see the point total at the top. So for student name Frank, Frank received one of seven points. I'm gonna scroll down here. Oh, got that first question right, so we're just gonna move on. Oh, he got that second question wrong. So in this case, let's provide that individual feedback. He said 9.5. So we can provide a little link here or a video to actually maybe a little explain a little bit more as to why they got that question wrong. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to provide text feedback. So we'll say, uh, be sure to complete your work by hand to ensure you are following the correct procedure. So now if the student goes back into the quiz, they can actually see the individual feedback provided by me. And then this last question, what is your favorite food and why give as much detail as possible? So again, we can provide individual feedback here definitely say we need more detail. But the one thing we definitely want to do is provide a score. So I'm just going to click on this line. And for this question, maybe I'll give them a two. So a two out of five, because they did provide an answer. They gave one reason why, but they didn't just they didn't provide any details. So I'll just give them a score of two. We're going to make sure that we save these changes. And now we can see Frank's score went from one to three. And that's saved for him automatically. That's saved for all of us automatically. Now, we can go one by one through all of the students that provided answers, no problem. Or the best thing about Google Forms is that it can actually take all of these answers and create a spreadsheet for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Spreadsheet. It's going to create a new spreadsheet that's going to save into our Google Drive. It's going to be named this for now, which is fine, not a big deal. We're going to click Create. Give that a second, and there we go. We can actually see the timestamp when it was uh, when the test was created or done. We can see Frank's score, three out of seven, and then all the answers that were provided on that Google Forms quiz. So we are all set. That is how we create Google Forms as a quick and easy test.